let's see. So I just put a couple together. This is a uh, first case, it's a 32-year-old gentleman, stats post uh, motor vehicle collision, and he's relatively healthy. He's got a little obesity, he's a non-smoker, it's an isolated injury to his left lower leg. And that's his x-ray on presentation. Um, so, let's start. <laughs> AP and lateral radiograph, skeletal mature individual. Um, looks like you got a lateral uh, fracture dislocation uh, of the ankle, uh, posterior malleolar fragment, um, and definitely a syndesmotic injury. Right. So I think we talked, I'm not sure exactly what order these pictures go in, but yeah, we, that's what I thought. I think we talked before about, um, you know, checking obviously checking tib fib films with these types of injuries because you suspect, you know, the, a masonuve type pattern. Um, sure enough, he has a fairly comminuted mid-shaft um, fibula fracture. So, how many people on the panel fixed their fibula shaft component? Um, yeah, it depends on where it is. Like that one's high enough, I might not. If you look at the, if when you reduce it, if the length of it looks okay, I don't know that I would. Okay. Agreed. I would agree with that. And I would say in part because fibular shaft fractures are a pain in the ass. They are. They just do not behave themselves, even though they look so simple, even the simple ones, right? And if you get higher up, you get into like nerve territory and that's very easy to bugger that up. Um, so I agree with everything you guys said, except this is my case. Just, um, many, several years ago, so I'm hoping I could do a better job this time around. But I want to caution the audience that it is very easy to not get that reduced correctly if it's comminuted. And if you don't get it reduced correctly, then uh, that's a big problem because you'll never have your syndesmosis right, no matter how many other tricks you employ, no matter how careful you are all about which direction you put your hand and all this kind of stuff. So we thought we had that out right, um, and we thought we had a pretty nice looking ankle mortise there, but um, this is just to give you some idea of what we've already talked about, what can and can't happen with the ankle, um, with the syndesmosis, and on this particular case, uh, we were malreduced in fact. Um, so here's his post-op CT, oops, sorry. That's his, that's his um, I think that might be his pre-op actually. But there's something else going on there that I should have noticed. And again, you know, hindsight and experience over the years. But it looks like he may have, have a little debris in the joint. And that right there demands an open debridement. And the, the poster mal, there's literature, and I've struggled with this too, Susan, that the poster mal, even the little one, if you have a syndesmotic injury, if you can put that posterior mal back perfect, then you probably should be expecting to. Then you know you've got your reduction. If you do it without addressing that, and it's another pain in the ass because then you've got to be in the back of the ankle, the patient prone or lateral, but the posterior mal, if you pay attention to getting that back in the right spot, then your syndesmosis should follow, uh, not taking into account debris in the joint. But right. So putting the posterior mal back is essentially necessitates a posterior approach. You, you really can't get it right with two cannulated screws front to back. So I love the always love the phrase you can sneak around behind the fibula. There was no sneaking behind the fibula. <laughs> Never works. Not as easy as it sounds, right? So I can't remember exactly what oh, so this guy oh, so we had a we knew we hadn't gotten it right, but then he gets an embolism and he's in the ICU and he's on long term anticoagulation and he's just not so healthy anymore. So we kind of sort of let, you know, we missed that window of opportunity to do something acutely. So we said, okay, maybe he'll be all right. And we talked about taking the screws out and letting it find its happy place and so on and so forth. But uh, unfortunately for this fellow, who is a young guy, these very tiny disturbances in the mortis congruity can lead to huge increases in your contact area and articular cartilage overload as a result. So. Beware the simple ankle fracture, because even though you know this one's not that simple when you look at it, everybody's like, oh, what do you got on today? Oh, just an ankle. I hate ankles. Ankles are so hard to get right. 
uh, much more difficult than other injuries that are oftentimes like like a, a, a tough humeral shaft with some comminution. You know, yeah, you gotta be careful of the nerve, but you got a lot of leeway with what you can do there, you know? These things are tough. It's a ring, just like the pelvis is a ring. And if you don't get one component correct, everything else is off. And they don't tolerate uh, misbehavior well at all. So that kid, um, I don't have a picture of it, I guess, but he went on to get relatively early um, arthritis which was uh, very unfortunate um, since he was a young kid. And, um, you know, I'm not sure, he, he never, it's not, we never took him to a fusion or anything like that, but I wouldn't be surprised if he ends up there in the years to come. This is another case similar, and I just wanted to show you an option. Um, also a bad injury, also um, unstable, and also has several components, including a, uh, fibular shaft. This one's higher and therefore even more difficult, I think, to address because of the nerve and everything else. And, um, you know, I mean, you, you can go in, you're careful, you know where it's at, you just take your time. Um, this is not my case. Uh, Sean Nork gave me this case from Seattle. Um, so, you know, they did a, I usually put a little mini plate just so that my screws, like a, a two hole plate, but they, the point is here that they achieved the, an accurate reduction of the fibula in the incisura because they fixed the fibula first uh, here. And some people may say that's overkill, and I think you could argue either side of the coin. But the point is that whether you decide to fix it with internal fixation or not, you have to have it accurately reduced. That includes length and rotation. If you don't, you will never get your syndesmosis right. Okay. So that's how they attacked it, and that's what they got for their effort, and that I would offer up. If you look, it's kind of out of the picture here almost, but if you look really closely at the x-ray I showed you before of my case, everybody always says when they're teaching the residents and stuff, look at this synosmosis and look at that medial clear space. And the residents very much focus on that medial clear space in my experience. And they just look to see if that's wide enough, if it's too wide, if it's not right, if it's not symmetric with the other side. And that's one clue. But when you're, I've seen them turn the foot into such a, a posture to try to get the synosmosis to look just right, that they're getting an oblique view of the talus, like almost, almost approaching a lateral. That doesn't count, guys. If you don't have a talus that's, you know, looking at it like, straight on where you see a square instead of elongated neck and so forth, then it's, it's an artificial um, comfort that you've achieved because you know, you're making yourself feel good, but it's not really declaring that your mortis is accurately reduced. So I always tell my residents to look at this line right here. They call it Harding's line, which it's definitely not. I'm sure it has a name and I don't know what it is. But the talus on the lateral border needs to line up right there with this radiographic density at the lip of the incisure. And if they look at that, I think it's more accurate for them to understand the relationship they're trying to restore. Susan, I think that's excellent. And that's what I also teach residents. I think if you want to boil down ankle instability, ankle fractures to one thing, getting the talus back under the mortise so that line is reduced, that's the main thing you go for. You can call it Harding's line too if I you will. want, okay? <laughs> <laughs> All right, great. Um, done for cases or keep going?